Good morning, everyone. Uh, Bob Ravenscroft, the Vice President for Advancement, along with John Woodrich for our media briefing on May 27th. Uh, before we get to the stats, John, and Q&A, there's a couple of announcements followed up by some follow-up um, from Brent's question yesterday and then uh, another perspective to share. Um, first of all, tomorrow, Thursday, we will not be doing a live briefing. We will ask you to send questions or topics to Brad uh, tomorrow and then for, for Friday and next week's briefings, and we will send you a press release with the relevant stats you're uh, accustomed to receiving. Again, we'll do um, press releases on Tuesdays and Thursdays going forward with updates on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Uh, Friday, we do intend to share some pretty detailed information with you on new visitation procedures. We're working through the final steps today and tomorrow. Brent, uh, in response to your question on vaping, um, we will be getting back to you hopefully with more information. I reached out to the leading physicians in pulmonary care in our emergency department and uh, to address your question. And what they said is they're gonna reach out to their teams to see if they've seen anything. What I can share is every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we have a um, kind of a big meeting with physicians and leadership in the organization to touch base on issues regarding the pandemic. And this issue has not come up. In my uh, interaction with the, the physicians I touched base with, though, they, they did want us to say that, um, you know, vaping isn't something they would recommend under normal circumstances, let alone when we're in the midst of a highly contagious respiratory disease that's engulfing the world. So, uh, but anyway, we will try to dig and see if we can get you any correlation. Lastly, this is a tough one to wade into. It's, a, it's kind of responding to the echo chamber. There has been some critique lately about Brian's strong position on advocate, advocating for universal masking. Um, the reason I'm bringing this forward is it, it was getting pretty pointed and, and uh, accusations of being uh, somewhat of a partisan wedge issue that we're participating in. As Bill Johnson, Dr. Bill Johnson has shared, as John and I have, as Dr. Rosenberg has, as Dr. Trapp has, has as anybody from Brian's perspective that has presented here, and, and worked on this issue. Um, universal masking along with social distancing and hand washing is incredibly helpful. Everybody I just mentioned and aren't throughout our organization, we span the political spectrum. This is not a partisan issue to us. It's a public safety issue. Um, so anything you can do to continue help uh, to reinforce the easy things we can all participate in to uh, help our uh, community, state, nation get back to some semblance of normalcy, we would appreciate it. Universal masking, in our opinion, will help us uh, have a better chance to get schools back to normal, uh, go to the gathering places, the concerts, the sporting events, um, all of the things that uh, we once all enjoyed doing freely. Um, this will just help get us back into those rhythms of life. So I apologize we're all being subjected to it. We know we won't change the minds of everyone, but again, uh, you can help us get out the message for universal masking, and it is not a political position by Brian Health. Uh, our stats, our daily census has climbed to 455. Again, I would note that uh, we have gone to single occupancy and mental health and our independent center. Usually those rooms are double occupancy for therapeutic reasons. Um, obviously with COVID-19, we've had to uh, modify that. So um, it's kind of getting back to normal from a volume perspective, not quite there, but, but definitely getting there. And then on the testing front, we have now administered 8,776 tests. The positives are now uh, 1,189, and we have 377 pending. John, I'll share a little bit more detail and talk about our mobile clinic that will be uh, in action this, this week. So then we'll open it up for questions. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. As Bob shared those numbers with you, we are seeing our number of positive COVID patients in-house decrease. We're at 22 today, with 16 of those being Lancaster County patients and the other six from outside. We have two individuals that are pending results that are inpatients, 10 individuals on ventilators, 10 in our ICU, three in our progressive care unit, and nine in our general care unit. And as Bob mentioned, we will be deploying our mobile unit again this Friday. Uh, we're doing this in relationship with the uh, Lancaster County Health Department and the cultural centers. 
We have about 150 individuals scheduled uh, for that, so all that uh, scheduling is, is happening through the health department. Uh, so we look forward to doing that again and reaching out and giving access to people that otherwise uh, don't have access to getting these tests done. Um, with that, we'll open it up to uh, any questions that people may have. Yeah, it has been mostly social media and a few isolated issues at um, our entrances where we're requiring uh, visitors to do it. We are targeting for the morning hours, but uh, we're still working on that detail. Um, we know that the individuals that have been contacting the health department, they're working with them on scheduling. Um, so I'll get the details for you on, on Friday. So this isn't for people just to show up. These are all pre-scheduled through the Lancaster County Health Department. We are seeing a stabilization, and I would say it is coming down a little bit. Uh, even with all the additional testing done, our true focus are the number of individuals that are testing positive that are ill enough to the stage of having to be hospitalized. So I would say from that perspective, I think it is coming down a little bit, but uh, I think we have to look at more than a week as a trend, so we'll be watching it over time to see if we continue to decrease uh, with the number of positive COVID patients that uh, need to be hospitalized. I would honestly uh, ask you to go to the statewide COVID dashboard where you can look at it county by county. Um, I, I serve on the Crete Area Medical Center board and we met last night and I know in Crete it's trending down and obviously we know there was a big spike there a couple of weeks ago. Um, but that will break it down county by, by county for you and see what's happening.